musical numbers weren't the only casualties of the cutting room. Sometimes comedy routines, no matter how funny, fell victim to the editing process. Directed in 1943 by the legendary Busby Berkeley, The Gang's All Here was a technicolor extravaganza. It boasted an all-star cast, including Alice Faye, Benny Goodman, and Carmen Miranda. The Rita, you remember Mr. Potter and Mr. Mason? Ah! Ah! I remember Mr. Potty. You are here to kick up some more heels, huh? No, Mr. Potter wants you to come to his house this weekend. Ah, 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 you naughty boy. You are what they call a fast workman, yes? <laughs> Mason, please. Well, it was really my idea. We wanted you to come and help sell war bombs. Oh, you know, I like you both. I think you are very cute. <laughs> But due to the film's length, this humorous sequence was cut from the final film. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Take It or Leave It program. Our first contestant is Sergeant Casey of the United States Army. Yay! Step a little closer to the microphone, Sergeant. What would you like to talk about? Famous women of history? All right, famous women of history. Now listen carefully. For one dollar, what woman was a crown of halves on a poor childhood French actress? Sarah Bernhardt? That is correct. You get a dollar. Would you like to try for two? All right, for two dollars. What woman was a Combe Harbors on a poor television near Albany? Helen of Troy, that is correct, you get two dollars. Would you like to try for four? All right, for four dollars. What woman was it that would climb on doors on a horse? Lady Godiva, that is absolutely correct. He gets four dollars. Would you like to try for eight? Well, I made four quick enough. You sure you'd like to try for eight? I might as well. How far did four bucks go in a joint like this? All right, but from now on, you're on your own. We continue with our category of famous women for eight dollars. What blonde movie star has a beautiful body and her last name means a body of water? Come on, think hard. Please, everyone, no help from the audience. Now, her last name is a body of water. Uh, could it be the Mississippi River? Mm, could be, but it isn't. Uh, last name is a body. <laughs> Veronica Lake. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> well, Sergeant Casey, your score is $8. Would you like to stop now or try for $16? Keep going. All right, for $16. What queen in history, a famous vampire, always made her mark? She was a famous umpire. I mean, uh, vampire. That's right. Cleopatra. That is absolutely correct, but take it or leave it. Well, Sergeant Casey, you've got $16. You want to stop now or try for $32? Shoot. All right, for $32. What popular New York actress who got her start in burlesque surprised everyone recently by writing a best-selling mystery book? Mystery book? Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Gypsy Rose Beauty. Absolutely right. Well, Sergeant Casey, you have $32. Do you want to stop now or try it for $64? What'll it be, $32 or $64? $64, naturally. You'll be sorry. <laughs> and now for the $64 question. What woman is a famous painting and it was painted by her son? Oh, uh, famous painting. Yes. Uh, by her son. Uh -huh. Please, Mr. Baker, I can't think if you're going to whistle. I'm just trying to help you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you said a painting. That's right. And uh, it was painted by her son. <laughs> it wasn't her daughter. Uh, Do you uh, know the answer? Oh, yeah, it's coming. Yes? Yes, yes, it's coming. Uh -huh. uh, yes, here it is now. Yes? Uh, no, it went away again. Then you don't know the answer. Uh, no, Mr. Baker, I'm afraid I don't. I... Enough, you win $64, and congratulations, Sergeant Casey. 
Good luck, Sergeant. Thanks. And now we the have telephone, a... Mr. Baker. Please don't interrupt my program. It's very important, sir. A gentleman by the name of Maxie. Maxie? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes? Maxie, what's the idea of calling me at this? What? She did? Tell and tell came in. At 45 to 1? Wait a minute. Maxie, that's 45 times 500. Thanks, Maxie. Okay. Goodbye. Jeepers, tell and tell one. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just become the proud parent of 22,500 bouncy little dollars. Tell and tell? Is a horse? Yes. Well, yes. Oh, of course. Yeah, thank you. Very nice. <laughs> Dorita, 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 where are you? Diane, Dorita, tell and tell came in. She did. She did. She did. Yeah, we could open our own nightclub. I have a she won. She where is she? Isn't that wonderful? Oh, oh. Look. He's sleepy. <laughs> Deleting a musical number was considered an easy way to trim a film's running time. They rarely affected the plot or the outcome of a story. Irving Berlin's There's No Business Like Show Business had plenty of musical numbers. A few too many, it was thought. When that midnight choo-choo leaves for Alabama. A man chases a girl until she catches him. After... You get what you want, you don't want it. Directed by Walter Lang, the Cinemascope extravaganza boasted an Irving Berlin score and an all-star cast that included Ethel Merman, Donald O'Connor, Mitzi Gaynor, Dan Daly, and, of course, Marilyn Monroe. Jamaica. Moderately high barometric pressure will cover the uh, northeast and the deep south. Small danger of fruit frost. Hot and humid nights can be expected. St. Vincent, 95. Guadalupe, 97. Santa Domingo, 99. Martinique, 105. But a running time of nearly two hours dictated the deletion of at least one show stopping musical number. Here's Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better. Ladies and gentlemen, the four Donahues. Performed by Ethel Merman and Dan Daly. Aye. And cut just prior to the film's release. Aye. Aye. This is the first and only time Merman recorded this Annie Get Your Gun hit for the big screen. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Anything you can wear, I can wear better. In what you wear, I'd look better than you. In my coat. In your vest. In my shoes. In your hat. Ah, oh, yeah, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Oi! I can wear a sweater. I can fill it better. I can jump a hurdle. Even with a girdle? I can do most anything. Can you bake a pie? No. Neither can I. Anything you can sing, I can sing softer. I can sing anything softer than you. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you yes, can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Faster than a flicker. I can do it quicker and get even sicker. I can live on bread and cheese. And only on that? See. So can a rat. Any note you can reach, I can go higher. I can sing anything higher than you. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can.
Arriba! 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 One popular movie that underwent significant re-editing was the 1952 production, We're Not Married. Boy, well, that's really something. My wife. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, that's all right. Keep looking. Much obliged. The story concerned six long-married couples who discovered that, due to a technicality, they're not legally wed. The ceremony that joined you in marriage was performed by Justice of the Peace before the authorized date of his appointment. We are compelled to inform you that you are not legally married. Now, if all these people are not really married, well, I don't know if it's honest to keep their money. Why should I send their money back when they're just as happy as if they were really married? But that's not the point, Melvin. Now, look, Mama. When these people get that letter from the governor, they'll have a choice that other people never get. Now, if they like each other, all they've got to do is to say yes again. And if they don't, well, it's all over, and that's the end of it. Featuring an all-star cast, including Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> Ginger Rogers, Mitzi Gaynor, and Zsa, Zsa Gabor, the sequences range from poignant and sentimental. Listen, mister, me and my wife have got to get a license. We've got to get married right away. Yes, we're you understand? It's after five o'clock. I o tell you, we've got to have that license. I'm sailing tonight, and we've got to be married. This kid's going to have a baby, and I'm not going to leave her here not married. You understand? To cynical and ironically humorous. Ah, uh, what coffee, what aromatic fragrance. It must be... You're right, love. I knew it, <laughs> I knew it. Yes, it's McKeister's Vita Fresh Coffee. The coffee with that locked-up goodness for everybody. Grind or drip. Cut. But one of We're Not Married's finest sequences was removed prior to the film's release. Featuring Academy Award winner Walter Brennan and Hope Emerson... This episode was considered too offbeat for some tastes. Yet from today's perspective, it seems wonderfully funny. Mr. and Mrs. Leif G. Beaufort, Black Roof, South Carolina. Oh, that dirty crook. Oh, he comes in here with about 15 big walloping children and a woman as big as that icebox. Oh, Melvin. Pushing and shoving and breaking up the furniture. And what does he give me? One measly dollar. Oh, but he was a widower, Papa, with children from his first wife. Yeah, 50 cents of it in dimes. Well, maybe he was poor. Or maybe he couldn't afford any more. I caught one of them sticking his finger in the syrup pitcher. That poor woman. I felt very sorry for her. Well, those Billy Goat kids better not start anything with her. Or she'll beat them to death with their own father. <laughs> Give her a twist, sissy. Where's the lunch? Maddie, where's the lunch? There it is. Where are you working today? Gonna tackle that North 40 today.
morning, Maddie. Oh, hello, Hanson. <laughs> Just happened to be passing. Sit down and have a cup of coffee. Oh, much obliged, Maddie, but <laughs> hate to drink coffee on an empty stomach. Have some eggs, too? Well, I sure would if I didn't hate to eat eggs without no ham. All right. I got some ham, too. That'll go mighty good with some grits and hot biscuits and molasses. Just as soon as I get these dishes in the sink. <sighs> Say, do you know that's just about as heavy a load as I've ever seen a lady of your years lift? Heavier than that after supper. <laughs> that's what I've been telling you all along, Manny. The things you have to do for that man just makes my blood boil. The... See, you suppose I could have a half a watermelon while you're getting the rest of that stuff ready? Just as soon as I get my breath back. If you wasn't married... You ready for some more? Just a minute. If you wasn't married... Look, handsome. I know what you're aiming at, but it ain't no use. It ain't even any use talking about it. What do you mean? I know you don't want to come right out and say it because you're a good man. But I know what you want is that I should run away from Leif and marry you. But I can't do it, handsome. Leif would never give me no divorce even if I wanted him to. And that's the only way I'd ever go away with you, with the paper in my hand. You sure... You sure Leif wouldn't let you go? Positive, hon. Not in 10,000 years. This dang near breaks my heart, Mandy Sugar. I know, handsome, but you gotta be brave about it. Yeah. I guess I'll try to be brave, but... I don't know how lucky I'll be at it. If there was any other way on earth I could think oh, of. Oh, no, I... no, there ain't no other way I can see that. I, I'll just have to, I'll just have to try and bear it. I can't understand is how come you married a man that makes you work so hard? Well, it may have been his money or the fact that he already had a family. Don't find many men with a ready-made family around here, you know. Yeah, but you can lose your looks working like that all the time. Oh, go on, handsome. What looks have I got to lose? And don't go running yourself down, Maddie. You ain't only a fine figure of a woman, but you must be strong as a mule, too. Shut your mouth, handsome. Yes, sir, I was just talking to myself the other night. For a lady of her years and what she's been through, you just can't beat Maddie Beaufort. Of course, she ain't no chicken, but... She's all woman. There's plenty of her, too. Well, it's awful nice of you to say that anyway, handsome. What we could do... We could live in Spartanburg and eat at the Greasy Spoon. Every night. Then you wouldn't have all this work to do. <laughs> what was that? Just the mailman. When he runs out of gas, he uses kerosene. Works all right, just scares me to death. I hope you make it. Did he see me? I don't think so. What I mean is. If you was only free, you can hop an old number nine tonight and be in Spartanburg 412. And then you wouldn't have no more work to do after that, hon. You should have me doing all the work and taking care of you. 
if you was only free. Can you read without your specs? No. But I got them right here. I can't see a dead blamed thing without mine. Here, take this and see what it says. I'll get you some more of them chops. It's a good idea. What was it, hon? What did that letter say? The letter? Oh, uh... <laughs> Just another ad for Cadillacs? Cadillacs? <laughs> they sure came to the right place for it. <laughs> Why not? If you was my wife, you'd have a Cadillac. Good-looking woman like you. I'd have you one quick and you could spit. One of them red ones. You're mine. What do you think? I tell you what, send her five. Maybe she'll get a bull whip and use it. Who's next? Next? 